one minute caller. Right, synchronised. Let's try and uh, be a bit more organised with the cameras today. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, what we got? Sorry, there's a bit of backlight. I really do need to block that window up. Mm. Also need to follow all the moles up up there as well. Uh, right, so we've, we've just missed a good opportunity for some filming, but I didn't... Uh, I didn't uh, think it was going to escalate as it did. So remember the red mount field that we did a few months back uh, and I used all the way through the last summer. It was a very basket case that somebody gave me at the beginning of the year. Half the mower was missing. So it didn't start last time I got it out. So I shoved, I shoved it under a bush out of the way so I didn't have to dig it out from behind a 16 million kayaks. And uh, I got it out today and then it started off with I'll get the blade off and sharpen the blade because I never sharpen the blade and it just gets clogged up and mulches and stuff like that uh, and then I noticed the blade was on upside down and then it took, I realised it got a washer behind it and it wasn't even indexed on the little lugs that they have so I don't know what was going on with it so but then I couldn't get the bolt out because it had been rammed in so tight because it had obviously spun in and over tightened it um, so I had to get the hot spanner on it and the, the big persuading bar and that and I got that off and then I brought it up here and um, reground out the other side which was also mangled as well uh, and then put it all back together and then um, eventually got it to start by hitting it with a bit of carb cleaner and it fired up first go, threw out a ton of smoke because I'd had it on its side obviously and the oil had run into the carburetor and it's just run for an hour, perfect. Well, I said perfect, after about 30 seconds of running and mowing, after being running for a couple of minutes, 30 seconds of mowing and the flipping thing died. And then I realised it got no fuel in it. Which is why it wasn't starting. But I did check the fuel and there was a good sort of centimetre of fuel, but I think it must have been slightly canted at one side and the pickup must have been right at the other side. So the little well where the at the bottom of the thing where the pickup tube, because it's one of those pulse ones, uh, the pickup tube, but it obviously wasn't. So that's what was wrong with it all along, it was out of fuel. But because we stripped it down, we fixed it. But it would have made a nice video. That's why there's crap everywhere, because I was grinding a blade, but I wasn't set up to video. It's supposed to be a two second job, see if I can start the mower. Uh, and if not, I was going to bring it up here and work on it. And then obviously it started and I got the blade off. So, um, shame. But I can't go back in time and I'm not going to take it all to pieces and knack it all the blade up just so you can see it. But um, I'm sure it'll be in. I've got about... Oh, my wife keeps buying um, Quellcast lawn mowers and we've got four or five of them, I think. Yeah, we've got one old Tecumseh. We've got our original Tecumseh that's not quite as old, that's still about 20 odd years old. Uh, that we bought when we first moved in here uh, and we've got uh, two Kawasaki Tecumsehs one was given to us recently from somebody who was cleaning their father's house uh, and that wasn't running either and I eventually got it running uh, and then we got another Kawasaki that Joanne bought who knows why but both of those have got issues because the bearings are not right both of the Tecumsehs aren't running properly and they're surging. Uh, so there's and, and nearly and, and three out of the four aren't running aren't running properly as well because the bands need replacing. One of the bands you can't buy for love and money and it's about 50 quid. But I did manage to find a band that was roughly the right size. Uh, a standard car park band with the same profile and everything. Um, which I'm going to test and see if that works and if it does I'm going to order up a load of them and replace all the bands. So they've got to come in here, all of them need servicing. Back again. Obviously the waffling put the camera to sleep, uh, the battery was flat, I was supposed to have checked that one. Uh, in fact, what have I done with it? Let's stick it on charge. Oh, we'll end up with not enough batteries. Right, so um, anyway, so there are going to be some more motor stuff coming in, a couple of lawnmowers. They all need servicing and we're going to sell a load of them. I, I want to sell the Tecumsehs, which is our original one, which is in absolutely immaculate condition. Uh, and the original old Tecumseh, which are probably, but are collector's items. The people are paying stupid amounts of money, like three, four hundred quid for them. The original old ones. So. 
that can go down the road and I'll keep the two Kawasaki's because they're, they're more modern because uh, we, we've got all Scadify cassettes so we have one set up as a Scadify and one set up as a cutter so we'll pick the set the best set of all of them I'll fix the bearings that have gone in some of the cassette units and we'll send it on its way um, I think the newer Kawasaki's are easier to get parts for even though they're not as well made so I think what we'll do is we'll take the older cassettes and send the newer cassettes down the road because I think it's, it's the cassettes that have the problem it's the gear on the cassette anyway right enough waffling this uh, I don't think we've had this one before so uh, you can see but you can't see so let's uh, I'm, I'm doing the thing I'm not supposed to do again aren't I uh, what have we got here we have got a cube a cube axial pro um, I don't know if it's a ladies bike or a gents bike uh, it's possibly a unisex bike don't know but I do see a lot, I have seen a lot of ladies riding these bikes um, they're, seen, they're an absolutely excellent entry-level bike they are aluminium um, I think even the forks are aluminium yep they don't sound like uh, carbon so it is an entire aluminium frame uh, and they normally come with a 28 tire on uh, and I think these have now got a 25 it's flipping filthy Jenny so this is Jenny she's one of the riders at the club no still got 28s on so they do come with quite it might have had bigger it might have had 32s on um, the great winter bikes the great beginners bikes but if you stay if you start to take your, your racing seriously and you want to get faster these are too slow they're quite they are quite heavy but absolutely perfect for winter right so uh, I think this is her winter bike now um, so she's got some issues with shifting she said so we'll give the bike a quick M check I said I'd give it a once over I can't imagine there's much wrong with it um, I've not had this one in before but I don't know if it's been serviced but I do notice it's got it hasn't got a uh, it hasn't got a uh, Shimano chain on it it's got a KMC chain on it so I suspect it has had something done to it uh, Shimano group set uh, Sora so it's the uh, it's the entry level of the good sets it's the bottom of the good sets not the the Avril and the stuff like that which are not so good sets so the, the, you know it's a, it's a decent set shifts well I think it's an, is it a 10 or an 11 1 2 3 4 5 oops 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 that can't be right 2 3 4 5 six seven eight nine it's a nine that's weird that's thrown me I, uh, I didn't think they did a, a nine in in that style of shifter because the nine speeds used to have the uh, the little button there which was really annoying but this is a it's got the the trigger lever and the thingy lever so that's uh, well there's a school day for you um yeah nice, <laughs> nice speed there you go who knew? Uh, what can we say about it? I think what we need to do is let's give it an M check. Oh, let's have a quick look see if we can find out what's going off with these gears. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going down. So I should imagine it was. Uh, yeah, that's not going up. Okay. So the gears need re-indexing, or the cable's gone. I think we just need to uh, I'm not going to rely on the uh, the fact he just needs indexing I, I will check because I've been caught out a couple of times recently so what we'll do is we'll just slacken that off and we'll push the cable out up here um, and just check we haven't got um, a, fi uh, a fibre off and it's starting to unravel because that's that's quite a long way off um, I'm surprised she was able to ride that she did say it was very difficult so we will uh, we'll get these out All right First things first, let's get an M check done. Oops, that's it. Right, so hopefully between the two cameras you can, uh, you can both see what I'm up to. So usually you know the drill. So how to do an M check. So I think I've said this many, many times. The reason we call it an M is because it goes up to there, down to there, down to there, up to there, down to there in the shape of an M. 
basic check you should do it on your bike every single time you go out for a ride you give yourself the basic M check and that will cover you for pretty much anything that's going to go wrong with the exception of snapping a cable All right. <coughs> um, but it's the safety thing snapping a cable is not going to cause you to fall off your brakes failing is so first things first we start at the bottom axle so just check the wheel spins it's straight it sounds good there's no play brakes work they're fine so now we're coming up to the steer tube that moves nice the, um, wasn't turning so well when I when I had it um, in the car but um, I don't know whether it just seized up or not or um, but I think can't have because that, that was feeling really smooth uh, it might have been because I didn't have the axle properly in and maybe the, the wheel was catching on something but we'll just give it a quick uh, uh, check for head knocks so what I'm doing is here I've got the front brake on I'm just rocking the bike backwards and forwards and I'm feeling either listening for play or feeling for play on the gears the other way you can do it is you would hear it you would hear something is is loose uh, and that would tell you either one of the wheel bearings or the head is gone but no that feels fine so now we've we've done the brakes we've done that now we're going to move down to the crank so first thing to check is it goes backwards sounds quite loud but it's an aluminium frame so you've got to you've got to cut uh, make allowances for that what i'm doing here is i'm trying to see if there's any play on the bearings check the pedals so a little bit of play on the pedals but they feel smooth so i'm not too concerned about that uh, these are i think these are sora pedals so i think they use a slightly different um, bearing to the the altogrus so they do tend to have a bit more play but that one's fine as well uh, just general inspection of the crank these are a solid forged crank they're not the hollow <coughs> sorry they're not the hollow bonded cranks that have been causing all the problem for Shimano so there's nothing to check for delamination or anything with these they're fine uh, just have a quick check to make sure your your disc uh, your chain rings aren't bent there's no signs of any damage to any teeth or anything from what I can see they look fine I will give them another better check when they get up saddle now the saddle wasn't um, tied up on this she just uh, chucked this one in because I think she swapped it from her other bike uh, fortunately they have a similar size thing so she swaps the saddle over I think this is a, a less comfortable saddle I don't know who knows um, it's definitely a ladies saddle anyway so it possibly is a ladies bike it's a nice colour anyway but teal surprised uh, Kate's not got one of them uh, right back onto the back wheel now that looks good no no deviation there no buckles uh, there is a bit of a grumbly bearing we'll go and investigate that a bit further when we get up on the thing it's difficult to tell now uh, last thing back brake right that back brake has got a little bit too much actuation on it to the point where it's uh, it's loose on there as well so if you notice that one that one's not loose so the back brake needs uh, needs tightening up a bit so we will have to have a look at that in fact we can probably do that now to be honest so um, I don't know if you can see what I'm up to there but no we'll, we'll do it while we're up on the stand because otherwise you, you lot can't see so let's chuck this up on the stand and uh, uh, see if we can find out what's up with these gears. Everything else looks fine. Uh, it could do with a good clean. Um, I will just check the headset on this. I think it is a sealed headset, so I don't think we've got any issues there. Um, there's no sign that there's any rust because it's a winter bike. You've just got to be a little bit careful. Some of these might have uh, a ball race, um, not sealed bearings, but a caged ball race in there. In which case, you need you will need to clean and grease them and possibly if you're going to be riding the bike in the winter considering consider upgrading them to a um, a sealed unit uh, which do perform better in the winter right 
Okay, and we're up. Let's. Uh, so far, so good. We're doing all right with these. Uh, with these sinking the cameras. Uh, right. So uh, just checking this. So these aren't hydraulic. These are. Um, these are cable so there's a there's a ball bearing in there and that pulls across it pushes the ball bearing up that rubs on that um, so it's obviously they've worn a bit so what we first need to do is just get take the slack out so um, we need to wangle this back a bit now these are usually quite hard because they do get corroded up right, we've nearly got all the slack out of that That's better. There's a lot less travel there. Right, so the other thing you've got to be careful of is now is just to make sure that it's not it's not pulling the bearing. So they do have an adjustment on both sides. So when you've tightened this up, um, all this does is moves that one on that side ac across. So actually, no, these these might be. Uh, now these are quite clever. These are double action ones. So normally the only action on one side, and what you've got to do is you've got to adjust the other side. Um, but these look like they've got, actually they've got some adjustment on both sides and they clamp on both sides as well, so they're double actuation. So that's quite, and they look about centered, so that's fine. Not seen them before. Um, usually it's Tecros, I, the, the cable ones that I see. I've not seen many of the actual Shimano ones. Yeah, they're both moving in, so they're fine. Yeah, right, let's see if we can find out what's wrong with these gears then. Um, precautionary thing, so we'll just drop it down. We'll just do a check of the cable. Like I said, I've been caught out a few times recently just indexing it, and then it turned out it's something else. Oh yeah, look at my Paulies. That was the... Uh, that was one of the fruit bushes around the edge of the lawn. It, 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 it ate me. So you're going, oh, but you've, you've completely messed it up. Yeah, but it's not indexed anyway, so it doesn't really matter. All right, now I might be able to get lucky here. And what we can do is drop that out and that gives us even more. So what I'm looking for here is, is, is there any unnecessary play in this bit first? I think what I can do is, I should be able to take all of that out. That'll give me a bit more room to play with. All right. All right. There is. There's a lot of muck on the cable there, but I can't see anything that suggests it's frayed. I think what we've got is just a lot of muck in the cable. Now that might be contributing towards a uh, a bit of an iffy thing. Uh, actually, it's the coating on the cable that's coming off. All right. So that might be not helping. Um, and it's, it's whether or not I've got any cable. Uh, I think I've got some 1.3 and some 1.1. So I can't remember what Jaguar is. Um, it also depends. So we'll measure this because I don't want to get caught out on the 1.1 and 1.2. It might tell you on here actually. So it's two, there's two standard sizes for road bikes anyway. It's 1.1 and 1.3. Most Shimano stuff uses 1.3 uh, but if somebody's cabled using um, Jaguar it could be 1.1. The theory behind the thinner one is um, you get 
because there's less surface area because it's narrower you get less drag uh, the downside to that is that where it goes around curves and things because it's thinner it's putting more pressure on the insides so you do tend to get uh, less lifespan out of a 1.1 yeah this this cable stuff's coming off all the way up I think it's gonna it's definitely gonna need replacing I don't think there's anything wrong with the cable itself I think it's just the coating that's coming off the slip stuff I mean it looks like stainless steel so I mean you could just take the whole thing out and just rub it all off with a bit of card but for how much uh, it's a couple of quid for one of those um, and because I don't do a lot with Jaguar anymore because I can't get hold of the parts I tend to buy Shimano stuff because the Jaguar stuff's more expensive and harder to get hold of so we'll just see what that is that is yeah, that's interesting so it's one point well that bit I've cleaned off is 1.25 so I'm guessing if I find a bit that's still got some uh, yeah I'm guessing it's 1.3 because it's well over 1.1 uh, I, I think the cables the the coating's probably worn down and it's gone sub where it's supposed to be I'll just check that this is uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, one point two five. So it's it's point zero five of a millimeter off the point one point three. So I think it is one point three cable, but the the outer coatings come off. Um, I think we need to swap that out then, which is good because we've got some Shimano stuff. We can chuck that in, and it should. Uh, Thing. so we will uh, we will get that off I will have to go and collect my um, uh, clippers I haven't bought the the bike shed uh, toolbox up here so we'll uh, we'll just whip that out and just check it's a bit annoying actually well that's that's not well that might be a Jaguar the ends don't look Jaguar but these are these ones up here are definitely Jaguar it would be helpful if they said on the cable what size inner it takes but uh, I think I've been consistently using Jaguar with 1.3 and I've not had any issues so um, we'll crack on with that. Uh, let's just get this one out first while we're before we go and rescue the uh, things because it doesn't really matter. Oh, what's that? Ping! Yeah. It's a bit scabby as well. I think we'll chuck a bit of molly copper slip on that. Where's my copper slip? Must be out. I can't see it. Nope. Supposed to be more organised in here. Oh, here it is. It's exactly where it should be. It's in the greasy bin. Let's see if I'm looking. Right. Shove that back in there before we lose it. Remember, tighten it up all the way and then turn it back a full turn. So, and then that gives us a bit of leeway. Yeah, it's definitely binding. So what happens is the, uh, the the stuff starts to come off and then it starts balling up and you get bits hanging off. I don't know if you can see that. And then it gets stuck in the cable. Uh, are we internally rooted? We are, because we are. Because it just makes life so much more fun. Right. 
uh, in that case let me prepare for the worst I don't really want to be dragging that all the way through now let's uh, It popped off now I got it the right way around this time there's a right and the wrong way to cut the cable so you make sure that this side's on one side of it it's not a problem with the cable clippers I've got because they, they work properly but if you're going to use a pair of um, snips then you need to you do need to make sure that you've got that bit right that's that one that one Oh, that'd be awkward. No, because that's the... That's weird. Right. I don't know where they come down, because they... That's the brake, that's that, that doesn't appear to. Oh, no, I was right first time. Oh, there we go. That was going mad. So what we're trying to do is just feed this up so it comes out the top so I can use this to feed the cable down. Just got to be very careful we don't lose it. Halfway up. Oh, there we go. It's coming out. There we go. That's what we wanted. There. Right, so I've now got a, the tubes up. I don't know if you can see. You can't see that. He can see that. So I fed the tube up from under there, which you could see, followed the cable up until it popped out the top. So now what I can do, I can just take that out and then I'm ready to just slide the other one straight down. I won't have an issue, he says. Right, so let's just, now I've never done a Sora, at least not, not this model of Sora. I think I might have done one right at the early days because I think I had a Sora. And, uh, and then there should be, ah yes it is, it is like the other ones, there's a little window, so they're just like the old Tigra. What you tend to find with Shimano is that they'll roll the group set down, so whatever's the old Tigra, the next version of the Tigra that comes down just hasn't pretty much the old Tigra things, but they might be made out of slightly cheaper metal, but they will be the, uh, the same, so... Yeah, there you go, it's there. So if we shove on this, that should pop out, he says. Yeah. It would do if it hadn't just... There. Oh, we had checked it was down, so why is it not coming out? I can see it, it's just not wanting to come out. This is where we find out it has got a... Uh, it has got a wire off. So what they normally do is uh, where are you? There you are. what normally happens is because it has to go through quite a tight uh, bend up here there. Quite a tight bend to get round there and there. So it's coming along here, comes through there, it goes really tight bend across and then round a, a um, a spool so that is really tight it tends to go just about there on the spool and you always get a thing off what happens is this get these get jammed so what weirdly that should have just popped out nicely but it, it didn't but uh, it's all off up here as well so I suspect it's not been that crisp because that's been going obviously because it's not got as much coating on it means the wire is thinner 
which means the wire is then taking a shorter route through which means it's slacker which means that the derailleur's moved across and it's 0.05 of a millimetre which is actually quite a lot um, yeah it's this off all the way down it's the problem with this Jaguar stuff it's really nice slick uh, shifting stuff when it's first put in but this coating comes off so my piece of advice to anybody is don't buy coated cables because you will end up replacing them quite often. Just get really good quality stainless steel, rock, what they call rolled smooth finish. So all the ones I've got are exactly like that. Um, now what I'll do is I will bin that. Boom. Uh, we will just have two seconds because I need a drink and I will go and fetch that missing tool. So far, so good. We're doing all right with these uh, with these sinking the cameras. Uh, right. So uh, just checking this. So these aren't hydraulic. These are um, these are cable. So there's a there's a ball bearing in there, and that pulls across. It pushes the ball bearing up. That rubs on that. Um, so it's obviously they've worn a bit. So what we first need to do is just get take the slack out. So um, we need to wangle this back a bit. Now these are usually quite hard because they do get corroded up. Right, we've nearly got all the slack out of that. See if it's uh, better. There's a lot less travel now. Right, so the other thing you've got to be careful of is now is just to make sure that it's not it's not pulling the bearing. So they do have an adjustment on both sides. So when you've tightened this up Um, all this does is moves that one on that side ac across so actually now these these might be uh, now these are quite clever these are double action ones so normally the only action on one side and what you've got to do is you've got to adjust the other side um, but these look like they've got actually they've got some adjustment on both sides and they clamp on both sides as well so they're double actuation so that's quite, and they look about centered, so that's fine. Not seen them before. Um, usually it's Tecros, I, the, the cable ones that I see. I've not seen many of the actual Shimano ones. Yeah, they're both moving in, so they're fine. Yeah. Right, let's see if we can find out what's wrong with these gears then. Um, precautionary thing, so we'll just drop it down. We'll just do a check of the cable. Like I said, I've been caught out a few times recently just indexing it, and then it turned out it's something else. Oh yeah, look at my Paulies. That was the... Uh, that was one of the fruit bushes around the edge of the lawn. It, 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 it ate me. Right. So you're going, oh, but you've, you've completely messed it up. Yeah, but it's not indexed anyway, so it doesn't really matter. All right, now I might be able to get lucky here. And what we can do is drop that out and that gives us even more. So what I'm looking for here is, is, is there any unnecessary play in this bit first? I think what I can do is, I should be able to take all of that out. And that'll give me a bit more room to play with. All right. All right. There is. There's a lot of muck on the cable there, but I can't see 
anything that suggests it's frayed. I think what we've got is just a lot of muck in the cable. Now that might be contributing towards a, uh, a bit of an iffy thing. Uh, actually it's the coating on the cable that's coming off. Right, so that might be not helping. Um, and it's, it's whether or not I've got any cable. Uh, I think I've got some 1.3 and some 1.1. So I can't remember what Jaguar is, um, it also depends. So we'll measure this because I don't want to get caught out on the 1.1 and 1.2. It might tell you on here actually. So there's two, there's two standard sizes for road bikes anyway, it's 1.1 and 1.3. Most Shimano stuff uses 1.3 uh, but if somebody's cabled using um, Jaguar it could be 1.1. The theory behind the thinner one is um, you get, because there's less surface area, because it's narrower, you get less drag. Uh, the downside to that is that where it goes round curves and things, because it's thinner, it's putting more pressure on the insides. So you do tend to get uh, less lifespan out of a 1.1. Yeah, this, this cable stuff's coming off all the way up. I think it's going to... It's definitely going to need replacing. I don't think there's anything wrong with the cable itself. I think it's just the coating that's coming off the slip stuff. I mean, it looks like stainless steel, so I mean, you could just take the whole thing out and just rub it all off with a bit of card. But for how much? Uh, it's a couple of quid for one of those. Um, and because I don't do a lot with Jaguar anymore because I can't get hold of the parts, I tend to buy the Shimano stuff because the Jaguar stuff's more expensive and harder to get hold of. So we'll just see what that is. That is yeah, that's interesting. So it's one point well that bit I've cleaned off is 1.25. So I'm guessing if I find a bit that's still got some uh, Yeah, I'm guessing it's 1.3 because it's well over 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, I, I think the cables, the the coating's probably worn down and it's gone sub where it's supposed to be. I'll just check that this is. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, 1.25. 1 so it's, it's 0 0.05 of a millimetre off the 0.1.3. So I think it is 1.3 cable, but the, the outer coatings come off. Um, I think we need to swap that out then. Which is good, because we've got some Shimano stuff. We can chop that in and it should... Uh, thing. So we will, uh, we will get that off. I will have to go and collect my um, uh, clippers. I haven't bought the, the bike shed uh, toolbox up here. So we'll, uh, we'll just whip that out and just check. It's a bit annoying actually. Well, that's, that's not, well, that might be a Jaguar. The ends don't look Jaguar, but these, are, these ones up here are definitely Jaguar. It would be helpful if they said on the cable what size inner it takes, but uh, I think I've been consistently using Jaguar with 1.3 and I've not had any issues. So um, We'll crack on with that. Uh, let's just get this one out first while we're before we go and rescue the uh, things because it doesn't really matter. Oh, that's a ping. It's a bit scabby as well. I think we'll chuck a bit of molly copper slip on that. Where's my copper slip? Must be out. I can't see it. Nope. It's supposed to be more organised in here. 
Oh, here it is. It's exactly where it should be. It's in the grease is bin. Let's see if I'm looking. Shove that back in there before we lose it. So remember, tighten it up all the way and then turn it back a full turn. So and then that gives us a bit of leeway. Yeah, it's definitely binding. So what happens is the, uh, the the stuff starts to come off and then it starts balling up and you get bits hanging off. I don't know if you can see that, and then it gets stuck in the cable. Uh, are we internally rooted? We are, because we are, because it just makes life so much more fun. Right. Uh, in that case, let me prepare for the worst. I don't really want to be dragging that all the way through. Okay, well that's, uh, has it popped off? No, I've got it the right way around this time. There's a right and the wrong way to cut the cable, so you make sure that this side's on one side of it. It's not a problem with the cable clippers I've got, because they, they work properly, but if you're going to use a pair of um, snips, then you need to, you do need to make sure that you've got that bit right. That's that one. That one. <laughs> oh, that'd be awkward. No, because that's the. That's weird. Right. I don't know where they come down because they that's the break that's that that doesn't appear to oh, no I was right first time oh, there we go that was going mad So what we're trying to do is just feed this up so it comes out the top so I can use this to feed the cable down. Just got to be very careful we don't lose it. Halfway up. Oh, there we go. You haven't stopped. Lights, brakes, disc bits, 
some brackets. Yeah.
I picked up the uh, the chain spanner as well because we didn't check the uh, the chain wear. Oh dear! Right, it's just gone. It does need a new chain. So it needs a nine speed. I haven't got a nine speed in stock, so we're gonna have to order that. It's just it's gone on one. It's not gone on the other, so it needs changing. So we'll get that changed. We'll order one up and just let her know. It's good as I checked. Which I was supposed to do. Actually, you can see Chris got quite a lot of cross wear in it, so that's probably not been helping with the shifting either. So I think all over it's. Uh, yeah, that's gone through. Yeah. Okie dokie. So I don't think I've got a nine speed. Pretty sure the other ones I've got are ten speeds. Let him have a They're down in the, uh, the workshop anyway, so we'll get one of those ordered. Uh, Ooh, back in the room. Right, that's that ordered, 15 quid for an Altagra 9 speed. That's a bit more reasonable. And they're coming down, bike parts are starting to come down to reasonable prices again because nobody's buying them. At the stupid prices they were asking 40 quid for a flipping chain i mean ridiculous right um we should be okay to proceed with the chain that's on here um it's not it, it's only just worn out um genuine shimano so if i keep these in stock i get them uh, i buy them in bulk i think they work out about six or seven pounds each um, um you might be able to get them cheaper now but that's what i pay for them so uh just to, to prove a point wherever it's gone let's check the thickness of this just for a laugh oh there you go <laughs> it's exactly the same so they're supposed to be 1.3 but it's 1.25 so it's exactly the same as the other one, so it's the right, it's definitely the right stuff. Um, right, now they're a bit fiddly these, what you've got to do is, I don't know if you can see, I don't like doing the moving the camera thing because it's not very, uh, I still don't think you can see. Focus! Right, so there's a there's two holes there, they look like a dumbbell. You feed the wire in through the top hole and it pops out the other side. If you're lucky. Right. And then what you have to do is on this side, which you can't see, which you probably you might be able to see now, is there's a little tiny tube and you've got to feed it into that tube. Now this is a lot easier than SRAM, where you you just chuck it down a groove and hope for the best it's the only way I can describe the way that theirs work um, now you should be able to put that in and then just feed that through and it will pop out there you go right don't get too excited at this stage because before you feed it through now what, what's worrying me is that we've got a whole load of that material still inside there because that still feels quite draggy so it's quite possible that we've still got a whole load of that uh, Teflon coating that's come off, but we'll see. If, it, if it's still draggy, we'll stick a 1.1 cable in. What you've got to do is you've got to get it into that bottom part of the dumbbell. So you feed it in through the top one, you drop it in through there, and then hold it. It's easier to do it like that than it is to pull it too far and then try and fish it back through. So um, I'll now put this one on, which is the adjuster which doesn't feel like it's been used a great deal right that's going through there nicely and then what you do is you feed it through your tube so you need to i'm now going to feed it through the the fishing tube that i put in Now the other thing I need to be careful of here is to make sure that this get, ends up in the right place and it's not going to get interfered with by any of the others. So that should be able to get under there. 
yeah I think that's fine so we'll just feed it out until it comes through as soon as it comes through we can just pull the fishing cable out and we can feed that into there that was easy wasn't it compared to some of the ones we've done right so in theory now we should be able to just drop this through now some of them have a little hole that you have to get through some of them quite helpfully don't and all you have to do is just put it under it's got a little bit of a I think it's got something just to stop the cable from falling out and getting wrapped round you didn't need to feed it through as it happened right so we should be able to put the cable on this bit so this is are we all the way back yeah we're all the way back so that does feel a lot better than the uh, it did before So now I could I could have chucked some lube down there to try and counteract that uh, Teflon coating off and possibly even put some of the Teflon spray in because the, the solvent in there could, might have just helped dissolve it. Um, but I'm not a big fan of lube in bike cables. Uh, motorbike cables, yeah, they're designed to be lubed, but um, push bike cables aren't. Uh, and all you're doing is just stacking up a problem for the future in that they're, it if it does get any muck or dust in it it's um it's going to be a right roll pain up the back side right. that's one of the easier ones to clamp in i must admit right let's pull all this back don't we first So the little trap door which I haven't shown you but I think I've shown you on other videos. That's it. I suspect the uh, oh, the Insta camera probably picked up the little trap door. It's a little clear uh, sort of grey plastic trap door. I could have just moved you and shown you but I can't be asked. Right. Well, that's, that's very slack. Right. Let's try again with that. Can you put a bit of that? Looks up for that one. Oh. One five. Right. So I, I normally try not to pull these cables too tight because it generally backfires on you. You end up moving the derailleur without realising. But yeah, I, I, I didn't. Oh, there must have been some slack still in the cable up there. Especially with these, I've got like multiple parts, and then they're they're running through the frames. They they don't actually seat properly until you put some tension on them for the first time. I mean, that's still that's still slack there. So we can get that better, a bit tighter. Nice. That's better. Right. Oh. That's gone straight up. I right, might want a bit more on it. Oh. Right. Is that going too far? No, that's fine. No, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that wants to just put a bit more tension on that.
Brontosaurus, so it takes more dialing in than an Altigra. Gone are the days of just putting it in the middle and putting a little bit of pressure on and wait for it to go tick. Give over. It's all right for a Sora. Right, Let's try it on the bottom one now. It will shift even cleaner than this. It will drop straight in once it gets a new chain on. Right. If anything, it's slightly over pointed that way, but the the, uh, the cable will uh, settle slightly. Um, these aren't generally too bad. These are quite good because um, they are stainless steel. So they, they I think what they class them as pre-stretched. So less of an issue, but no. Oh. Right, let's uh, kick its, its thingy on. And I think we can send this one down the road once we get the uh, the chain on it. So we'll have to leave this in here, and then we'll get the chain put on. Uh, it's up to her if she wants to take it actually, I'll let, I'll let her know and then I, she can drop it back in or I'll stick her the chain on at the club. Uh, it's easy enough for me to do. But that's okay, I think we've fixed that one. That's all running nice now. Jobs are good. Huh? Right, so that's uh, how to diagnose slipping gears. Uh, and we, we've given the bike a once over. Um, yeah, so you've kind of seen one of the classic problems with coated chain uh, cables that's why I've stopped using them the Ultigra ones the uh, the first Ultigra 11 speed with the Ultigra silks silk something or other coated absolutely awful would come off within two or three months of putting it in and they were really expensive but with these um, the mechanism that looks like that on the Ultigra that angle is so narrow that you have to have to put so much force on them. unless you had the super the super slick uh, coating on it it made it very difficult to change gear um, yeah which is why that's, that's a bit annoying because as I said they, they dropped the group sets down so that was a 105 uh, Altagra style derailleur and that that angle on some frames is, is too tight so it's almost pulling down rather than pulling across so it causes a few issues. Um, my uh, carbon Fire NZ Holsworth frame was a nightmare for it. It almost needed just a pulley, just to pull the cable over to one side and then take it round the pulley. In the end, I switched. Uh, I switched to the newer Altigra, which has a completely different mechanism. It sits there, and, and the, so the, the the fastening points further across. Because that's all it wants. It wants that fastening point. It wants to be further across over there. So, uh, I not sure what that looks like. That It looks like what they've done with these is they've actually done something to them. 
and, and offset that slightly with this mechanism here because that would have just been straight in there as the bolt so what they've done is they've dropped the, it down there and it gets bolted through there now so uh, yeah if you look at the old autographs you'll see the bolts up there not down there so what that does is that gives you a, uh, a bigger it opens the angle up so that's kind of how they fixed it but anyway right uh, we can uh, give Jenna a ring and let her know she can uh, she can take the bike if she needs it tomorrow or Sunday but the chain's coming tomorrow anyway so I might as well just uh, hopefully she'll say leave it here and then I can just chuck the chain on it tomorrow but anyway right jobs are good and you might be back tomorrow for the chain fitting so just in case we'll say uh, like and subscribe if not you'll see me tomorrow for a uh, chain putting on this right now I've got to go and play with some pink goo <laughs>